thanks for your interest in Make You Safe. I'm Tom, and I wanted to give a very brief overview of Make You Safe's technology and how Make You Safe works. Hopefully, that'll answer some of your questions. So let's dig right in. You see, our approach is that we believe in every industrial environment, there are clues to risks and hazards that exist for workers in these environments. These are often referred to as uh, the leading indicators to risk uh, that everybody agrees are important, yet are very often described as hard to get access to that kind of data or near miss reports that everybody wants more of yet everyone also seems to agree that not nearly enough of these things are reported as probably actually happen on the front lines. So we've created technology in the form of a wearable armband that collects that data automatically and sends it to our cloud computing platform where we're able to analyze it and uh, use it to identify patterns and trends within the environment, uh, facility uh, so that we can predict and prevent injuries and claims in the work environment. So envision, if you will, a worker comes into their facility to start their shift and walks up to our wall-mounted base station, which is a kiosk. They simply enter a unique personal identifier or employee ID number and a core wearable device about the size of a matchbox or about the size of your thumb will be assigned to them when one of the bays in the base station lights up. They simply remove that device and slide it into an armband worn holster where it locks securely and then they go about their job, go about their day. That wearable device, once it's in the environment being worn by a worker, begins to collect data with its numerous IoT enabled sensors. And it sends that data via Wi Fi back to our base station. That base station is connected to the internet, either wired or wirelessly, and sends uh, that data to our cloud computing platform, which we call Make You Smart. And it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for that data to show up in the dashboards in our application for safety and operations leaders or for insurer loss control teams. Here's a closer look at the actual wearable device. Numerous sensors are labeled here. I kind of like to describe this though in terms of the four types of data or categories of data labeled across the bottom. So first would be data about environmental conditions, things like light levels, temperature, humidity, changes in barometric pressure. Those sound rather simple, but they certainly do have a significant impact on worker productivity and fatigue, uh, identifying things like um, heat exhaustion or when heat protocol ought to be enacted uh, is certainly important. In addition, there's a microphone on the device, which acts as a full noise dosimeter. Since we're within 18 inches of the wearer's head, we're able to get a reading of sound in multiple octaves and calculate the total time weighted average or the noise exposure for each worker. We've also got air quality sensors built into the device. Second category would be potentially harmful human motion. We're using accelerometers on the device to understand and identify motion coupled with force in three axes. So a logical place for us to start was identifying slips and trips and falls. And we've provided lots of training data to our machine learning models. So now when we see a significant motion, we send that sample to our cloud platform and it's there that we classify and categorize what kind of motion it is and return to the user, to the, the safety leader, an answer was this slip 
how confident are we, what's the accuracy or confidence level rating. Uh, so in addition, we're now adding motion definitions to uh, our machine learning models. We're able to identify push-pulls and we're able to see motion signatures that may be repetitive motion. Um, all of those would be very significant to a safety leader to begin to understand the risk profile for a worker. Third would be location. Whenever an indicator is detected, it's then that the wearable device listens via Bluetooth signal uh, and begins to identify what work area or work zone or workstation, what area of the facility that worker is in. We take that location data and we overlay that on top of a facility floor plan. So you're actually able to see a bit of a, a heat map view or, or a Doppler radar view, uh, which indicates the frequency of indicators that are being detected by area in a facility. And last but not least, there's a button in the middle of the device which allows a worker to push it. It has to be intentionally held down until the LED light indicates that you can leave a voice memo. And that is intended to streamline more near miss reporting from the front lines to the safety leader. We hear all kinds of things that are significant on a daily basis from the front lines, even things that have impact on process improvement, as well as quality concerns, things that leadership wants to know, we've enabled more seamless and easier reporting of those things from the frontline workers. In addition, I'll point out some things that we're not doing. We have a high degree of respect for worker privacy. So we're not collecting anything that is personal or biometric. There's nothing that's HIPAA covered, really nothing looking inward at the worker. Instead, we're looking outward into the environment and what's being encountered. We're not giving any haptic feedback. We're not uh, doing anything that would create more of a distraction or a work interruption. We're not constantly reminding workers that they're doing something wrong. Instead, this is one-way communication back to safety leaders to enable better decision-making. We're not continuously tracking workers. Only when an, an indicator is being detected do we listen for the location. And further, in this time of COVID, we've heard some things from customers that are of value to them. For example, since the wearable devices are all returned back to the ba base station at the end of a shift or end of a day, they're sanitizable. The armbands are kept by the worker and may be laundered over time. Uh, it's also significant that we're not asking anybody to use any personal devices on the job. Instead, the Make You Safe device is low cost and easy to deploy. We take that data then and we send it to our cloud-based computer software platform which we call Make You Smart. We've just released recently Make You Smart 2.0, which is a redesigned set of dashboards that enable an at-a-glance look at highest priorities for the safety leader. So you'll see things here like motion indicators being detected, environmental indicators being detected, uh, trends that have been identified by our computer models, uh, we can identify hazards, we can listen to voice memos. Uh, all of these things can be drilled into. And of course, this is fully responsive for use on any device. We would love to give you a closer look. So that's a very brief look at Make You Safe and what we're doing and how we do it. I hope that you will take the opportunity to talk with a member of our customer success team to get more information and answer further questions. If you have that discussion, I would encourage you to ask about contact tracing and worker density mapping in response to COVID. We've released those features, which may be of interest. 
In addition, we've got some results that we've published in a uh, pilot summary report talking about results over time. And in addition, we can discuss details around deployment of Make You Safe, what it takes, how we go through some steps, typically a half a day of installation and a little bit of checklist type work beforehand is really all it takes. We can also talk about cost. We're in the neighborhood of uh, tens of dollars per employee, uh, not hundreds or thousands of dollars. So thanks for taking a few minutes to listen. Uh, if you're interested in our pilot summary report, the URL at the bottom of the screen is where you can find that.